All right, so let's get into the Word of God. Three things that took place in the Garden of Eden. We're talking about the blessed family and talking about the blessed family. Next week, God says the same. I'll be talking about the blessed um, uh, mother. Next week, the blessed father and then the blessed children. So I'm going to try to... um, I'm going to try to really, really talk to you about family, and um, I believe that there's going to be some husbands and wives elbowing each other during these services, and some aha moments, so I'm really seeking God, and I believe it's going to be dynamic teaching, but we got to start out as the broken family, and when I say broken family, I'm not talking about divorce. Uh, though that comes from brokenness but I'm actually talking about the garden of Eden Adam and Eve did what in the garden they ate of the forbidden fruit right are y'all alive all right okay all right this is a charismatic church and it's all right to shout in church all right so (laughs) that that helps me a little bit it just lets me know that you're out there all right so So really what took place in the Garden of Eden? When Adam and Eve sinned against God and ate of the forbidden fruit that God told them not to eat of, what really took place? And and today I want to talk about three results. And I know there's more things that's actually taking place in our life, but I just want to deal with three today. Three results as as a result of the fall of Adam and Eve. The first thing that took place is shame. The second thing that we see is blame. And the third thing is fame. So that's what I want to talk to you about today is shame, blame, and fame. Here we go. Y'all ready to jump in it? All right. Uh, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Somebody say amen. And he said unto the woman, the talking snake, come on now. He said, yea, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman, shouldn't have been talking to the devil, said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but what? Next scripture. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you what? die and the serpent said and the devil's always trying to cause cast doubt on God's word he said to the woman you shall not surely die for God does know that in the day that you eat thereof your eyes shall be what opened and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil how many of you know that tree is still alive today and there are many people that are still eating from that tree That's why they constantly look at works. They see somebody drinking alcohol and they say, oh, he drinks alcohol. Uh, Don't don't let him into church. But listen, God don't care about his drinking. God cares about the man. Come on now. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, it's the tree of good. The devil tricks us by good because good is not God. The only life giver is the tree of life. And that's why the brand of the church has got to be the life of God that comes from God himself. So I don't want to hear about your good or your evil. I want to hear about God. Come on now, because good is not God. Good will trick you. You think you're somewhere with God being good, and you ain't got God. You like God, but you don't got God. That was the lie of the devil. He told the woman, you'll be like God if you'll be good. If you just eat eat this tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like God. Listen, let me tell you something. You gotta be more than like God. You gotta have God. Because there's only one life giver and that's God. And that's this that was for free. This isn't even my sermon. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and to treat to uh, be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and she did eat and she gave unto her knucklehead husband that was standing right beside her who wasn't protecting her 
and he did eat. Listen, the same scripture, the same writer that wrote 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17 is the same writer that wrote Genesis. Because he said that all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is none of the Father, but is of the world, and the world is passing away in the lust thereof. But they that do the will of God shall abide forever. Look what the temptation was. When she saw that the tree was, was pleasant to the eyes, that it was good for the flesh, and that, that it would make one wise, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Same three temptations. Those are the three doors of the serpent, the devil, that attacks all of us. How I many of you know we're in the spirit, not in the Holy Spirit, not in the flesh? Somebody shout. <clears throat> and the eyes of them both were open when they disobeyed God and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a covering, aprons. Verse 8, let's just keep moving. And they heard the voice of the Lord God in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife did what? The first thing that took place is in the fall is they actually hid themselves. I was looking at shame. You know, when you feel ashamed, you know the first thing we try to do is hide. And where did we get that DNA? Because here's what happened. When God created us in the Garden of Eden before sin entered into the world, we had God. We had his DNA. We had a spiritual DNA. But when the devil got in there and we disobeyed by listening to the devil and he entered into the human race, now all of a sudden we got another DNA. Are y'all out there? Now we have a spiritual DNA and a biological DNA that's satanic. That's why Jesus said, Marvel not to say unto you, you must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven because your DNA has got to change back to God. Now that the devil's entered into your life, now you've got to have a, a, a conversion a born again experience so that now you receive back the DNA of God. Come on now. And it's the power of God that leads you and guides you. I was looking at DNA. DNA is a self-replicating material in the living. In other words, there's a rule of action in all of us when we're born into the world now to sin. There's a desire in it. You don't have to teach a little kid to lie. He, 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 he comes out lying. It, it, when he comes out, it's still about him. If, if you don't believe it, I want a bottle. Wee, I need my diaper change. Wee, I, don't, I feel like I like you today. So where did he get it from? He got it from the fall. So during the fall, we actually lost God consciousness and we actually gained what I call self-consciousness or guilty consciousness. Are y'all alive out there? Praise the Lord. So instead of us being like God, we became unlike God. And that's what took place um, in, in the Garden of Eden in the fall. So shame has now entered in. Adam and Eve have now hid themselves from the presence of God. God comes down. He says, Adam, where are you? And Adam starts hiding behind a tree. And then God says, Adam, why were you hiding? He said, well, I didn't have no clothes on. So I want to ask you a question then. Was he worried that the Japansies might see him? I mean, Adam, who's looking at you? Look, I don't care if the dog sees me naked. And now all of us have got to deal with this shame spirit that causes us to hide. Listen, we hide behind alcohol. We hide behind busyness. We hide behind our guilt.
gifts and talents at work. We hide behind housework, lady. Lots of times when Jeannie doesn't want to deal with anything that I'm trying to deal with, she'll just get real busy. Start, start cleaning. I mean, how many men, how many men hide in their careers? Hide in their rooms, hide in their offices, hide in their work. Listen, let me tell you something. There ain't one way to get healed and delivered from shame in your life. I'm going to just let the cat out of the bag. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Because here's what God did. Here's what God did. They sowed fig leaves. They tried to cover themselves. They tried to hide themselves. I mean, you know that you don't have the power. It's not in you. You can't do it. Never could do it. You're weak. And he is strong. So the Lord said, all right, the fig leaves ain't going to get it. By the way, I would have picked a magnolia leaf or something like that. It would have been a lot easier to sow than, than um, clover leaves. So they picked the worst tree in the world to try to sow the leaves together. Anyhow, clover leaves? What the heck's wrong with you? Let's try to find a magnolia tree, a nice straight leaf that you could... And I don't know how they would hold up. Man, how long would a doggone fig uh, pants suit last you? So, <laughs> it's itching. My brother, buddy's itching. So what did the Lord do? The Lord went and killed an animal, shout somebody. And so he took and gave Eve her first fur. Thank you, Jesus. And he took the blood from that animal that looked forward to Jesus Christ that would actually pay the price for their sin. Come on now. Listen, let me tell you something. You got to bring your shame to Jesus Christ because he'll cover you. If we got that scripture, Isaiah chapter 61, can we look at that? And then we'll come back to those other scriptures. 61. Is that it? No. Here we go. 61. 61 what? What did I say it was? 61.10. So here it is. And here's what the Lord says. He says, and I will, uh, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Come on now, the joy of the Lord. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. Shall somebody. And he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Listen, can I tell you that when you come to Jesus Christ, what he does is, is he takes your account, the sin that's in it, and he withdraws the sin out of your account. And then when you believe God, Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness, then righteousness, Jesus' righteousness is, is, is sowed into your account. So here's what the Lord does. The Lord takes your sin debt and then he gives you his righteousness which becomes a robe that actually covers you yeah. listen let me tell you something and it'll be it'll be hiding in Jesus come on now which will be the real spirit of God in your life somebody give God glory because that's what he actually does so stop letting the devil lie to you. I, I just remember me growing up um, and just, can I be honest? Is it, is it all right if, if I be honest? And I know that this never happened to any of you. This is just me. But when I was young, I could not go to the bathroom with anybody anywhere near me. It was shame. And I'm telling you what, if there was any noise, I could not go. I need to turn the water on or something. Now, it got kind of quiet in here. I, I know that's just me. None of y'all ever had that kind of shame in your life. But where did that shame come from? So, so that was that is just something that I had to deal with. And of course, I'm 58. I don't care who's around now, so... It don't bother me. I, I'm delivered. 
But when I was young, that was a big deal. And, and it was major because, man, you know, you, you, when you're dying to go to the bathroom and you can't go, it's just painful, you know, it's miserable. So, hallelujah, that's just one of my shame game things that came in my life. All right, the next thing is blame, and I'm, I'm, I'm moving. So as soon as, as soon as they sinned and God came and said, hey, what have you done? So he asked, he asked, uh, he, he asked uh, Adam, did you, you were hiding, all right. did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat of? Yeah, but she made me do it. You sissy. All right, let me see if I got this straight. You're a grown man. You're a free mortal agent. You, you, are, you own your own life. God gave you. You're responsible. I said you're responsible. And now you've done something. And now it's someone else's fault. And worse than that, you said the woman that you gave me. God, I was doing fine till she showed up. I was perfectly happy with the Japansies. And then you gave me this woman. And that's why I ate. And God said, all right, what about you, girl? So, so what, 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 what happened to you? So why did you eat the fruit? Wait, wait who said that? Who said that? <laughs> what happened? The devil made me do it. Oh, the devil made you do it. When will we own ourselves? When will we take responsibility for our own lives? When will we stop blaming other people for the reason why we are where we're at? Oh, you don't know how I was raised. You don't know what happened to me when I was young. Look, man, it, everything happened to all of us when we were young. We did stupid stuff. Stupid stuff happened to us. Sinners mistreated us, abused us, molested us, raped us, uh, uh, beat us. We, we've all been abused. But when will you own yourself and take responsibility? When will you stop allowing the devil to deceive you, to make excuses for a reason why you're not acting like God or living for God? When will you choose to live for God and not let anybody or anything hinder you from being what God wants you to be? There just comes a time at 45 years old when you got to own yourself. Man, stop being a, what is that? Stop being a victim and be victorious. So there's two things, a victor or a, vict uh, a victorious person. So victory, vi victor or victory. You got to choose victory. So, so here's the deal. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Let's take a look at that because I want to look and see where blame comes from. Where does accusation come from? Where does bitterness and resentment come from? Where does fault finding and accusing other people and assuming things, where does this come from? Because this is a work of the devil. And this is, this is what the scripture says. And I'm going to look at it. This is a C part in that scripture. It says, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Here's what the scripture says. Woe unto you inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knows that his time is but for a short. And so now the devil is fired from God in heaven so God sent him fire down to us 
And now he enters into the human race of someone that has been fired and rejected and has now influenced us with satanic DNA. And as a result, he's got his fingers in our life and now he starts to bring his manifestation of his unholy works in our lives. And here's what he did. The accuser of our brethren has come down to us and he has accused us before God day and night. Can I just tell you that every time you're operating in blame, do you know what spirit it is? Do you think it's God? Do you think there's a gift called fault finding? You ever know anybody that every time you get around them, it's always something wrong? Sometimes I just stop them and say, what is right? What? Just give me one right thing. I don't want to hear what's wrong because I believe God is good and I believe that he's faithful and I believe he's going to work it for my good even if it is bad because I got God. You got to believe like that. Because if you don't, you're releasing the wrong spirit. Listen, I'm telling you now. I've got friends that I've known for many, many years. And every one of them that has been negative. I have watched them in divorce. I've watched them in bankruptcy courts. I've watched them with a bitter spirit. And I'm telling you now, now I'm 58 years old, going to be 59 this year. And so I, I got a little track record now where I can look back at, at my life and others' lives now and, and see what kind of spirit they had, what kind of personalities they had, what kind of character they walked in. And now when I look at them and, and, I, and, I, and I look at their lives, their lives are devastated. Because I'm telling you right now, the blame spirit, the fault finding, the, uh, anything that is negative, where they're constantly negative, there's always something wrong. Every one of them, not, 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 not some of them, every one of them have got major problems. And so I'm telling you now, if, especially if you were raised in a negative family where they were always negative, you got to rise up out of that stupid stuff. You got to. Uh, if you're married to someone that is um, negative all the time, y'all got to sit down at the table and say, look, we're going to believe God's word. We, we're not believing what we feel out here or what we see out here. We're believing what God says. We got to believe God's word. You got to get positive. Listen, uh, one example, the children of Israel. And get me up there, Derek. Um, get me on the um, keyboard. The children of Israel. How many years did they roam in the wilderness? Who are the only two that made it into the promised land? Joshua and Caleb. What was Joshua and Caleb's report? We can take the land. We're well able. And they got grapes in there this big around. Hey. Right. Um, they're bread for us. We'll take them out in one day. And so, the, and, and then 80 years old, Caleb told Moses, said, listen, you remember that mountain you promised me 40 years ago? I know I'm 80, but I'm just as able as is when I was 40. In other words, he was 80 years old and he says, look, don't worry about the last 40 years we've been roaming around crazy in this wilderness because I still been believing God, even though all of them didn't believe God and even all of them have been snake bit and all of them have died in the doggone wilderness. And I have believed God and I am able to take that mountain I know I'm 80 but I feel like I'm 40 and he went and took that mountain he believed God and trusted God all right the last thing I'm gonna jump in this real quick the last thing is fame this is so important you got to get a hold of this can, can y'all give me five minutes to talk about fame because I'm not talking about you becoming famous but I'm talking about from the fall, now you need recognition. Now you need to be noticed. Now you 
are separate because here's what happened in the fall. Genesis chapter 3 verse 20. If you got that, let's take a look at that. Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now somebody said, well, that doesn't seem that bad. But the problem with that is, is, is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 and, uh, through 25, when he was created before the fall, Adam said concerning Eve, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, right? So Adam said that Eve was created out of me and me and her are one. Me and her are not separate. Now the fall comes in and Adam renames his wife. And he says, you'll no longer be, I'll call you bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and we're one. Now you are Eve and you are separate from me. Now you are no longer connected to me as one like we were. Now you, I'm branding you. Now all of a sudden you're separate from me. Now all of a sudden, girl, your primary responsibility and purpose in life is to be barefooted and pregnant. You get in there and have me some babies, girl. Because you're the mother of all living. And to this day, women think their highest purpose in life, don't throw rocks at me yet, is to have children. And then they, they, a lot of times they get depressed when their children grow up because they say, what is my purpose anymore? But I'm submitting to all the ladies in this place and across the world today that your highest calling and your highest purpose is not barefooted and pregnant and having babies. Your highest purpose is to be connected to God. It's a relationship with God. And your highest purpose is to be connected with your husband and with your family. You are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh and you are one and the problem is is now the devil has tried to separate us now rather than one in the family now we become separate with our own agendas and our own uh, uh, purposes separate from each other that's why that's exactly right Hilda that's why when you tell a, 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 a son in the family, you say, son, are you going to be like your brother? You know your brother was a great football player. He won state. Are you going to be like, he may not be a football player. God might not have put that in him. And now all of a sudden it's a competition. Oh, now it's a separation. Don't you understand? The devil is trying to kill us through separation. He's flipping the script. He's twisting it on us. And yes, mama, you're a great mama. And yes, you're supposed to be a great mama. But that ain't your highest call. And listen, you ain't separate from your husband. The two are bone of their bone, flesh of their flesh. Family is one, not... Because that's what the devil has done. I'll give you an example. Genesis 5-2, real quick. And I'm closing. Now all of a sudden we have to have our own recognition. Now all of a sudden we're separate. God never intended it. He intended us to be one. We're one with God. Our family is one. My wife is me. I can't mistreat her. If I mistreat her, I mistreat me because we are one. She's not here and I'm over here. We're connected to two and become one in what God has joined together. Let no man separate. Listen what the scripture says, Genesis 5, 2, as we talk about generations. Male and female created he what? 
them. And he did what? He blessed them. That's important. By the way, you're blessed. And he called their name Adam, Adam, in the day when they were created. So let me tell you something. When God created us, we were one. And then when the fall came in, the devil separated us. And we some kind of way got separate agendas and separate purposes. But this has never been God's will. This has never been God's purpose. Somebody help me in this place. Listen, our family is one. One. My wife and me are one. The fall caused us to become separate. Here's what the fall did. The fall caused competition to come in. The fall caused me to label her. The fall caused me to be separated. Man, I'm telling you, I'm not competing with my wife. I'm not competing with my kids. My, my, my sons as brothers, they're not competing against each other. We're one. Let me pray for you as we get ready to go out of this place. Come on, stand to your feet so we can get ready to go home today. Three results of the fall. Shame, blame, and fame. Shame, blame, and the fame. What's the answer? The answer is Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ covers us and gives us God's righteousness and pays our sin debt so we're no longer guilty. The power of Christ comes into us. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come before you. And God, we hear your word. Your word teaches us that we are bone of each other's bone we are flesh of each other's flesh the bible said he accused the brethren day and night we are brothers and sisters god we're not separate we're one our family is one nobody's better than anybody we're all equal. We're all one. So God, I pray today for the revelation of family. I pray, Lord, that the families of MPC will come together as one in Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will cover us from our shame. That you will help us, Lord, to not take the bait of Satan and start blaming and accusing and offending each other, God. That we would not be separate, God, but that we would be one. So, Lord, I pray that you will move on every family here at Miracle Place Church, our global family across the world. And I pray that we will become everything that you've called us to be, Father. And I thank you, Father God, that the power of Jesus Christ forgives us and covers us in the name of Jesus right now, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a great big hand clap today. All right, I love all of you guys. You guys have a great, great, great day. Be careful going home. Have a great day.